Good morning all. I feel like I owe you guys uh, a bit of a video because I haven't done a video in a while and a lot of people have been emailing and asking. So here's a little update video. Uh, it's nothing too exciting. I'm just gonna do a little walk around of my new unit and I'll show you how we've been uh, getting on. Um, start here. Outside I have an office, although I've done absolutely nothing with it and there's nothing in there other than took that still needs to be taken away. Ooh. And a ladybug. Got some desks, got lights. It's all right. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my office anyway. I've done a deal with the landlord, but um, he's still trying to sort it out with someone else. But yeah, this is the office I hope to have. Not that I really need an office, but you know, it's always nice to have somewhere. Uh, inside hasn't really changed too much. Still got my golf buggy. Still got my heater. I've just piled all my crap everywhere. I'm still trying to have a massive sort out, as I always say. I moved my workbench down to here now, although it's covered in took. Ed Gasket, my little Renault van. For those of you who have not seen this, go back and watch some of my older videos. I'm turbocharging this on a Max ECU Mini. I've also brought down the forged C1J engine. So this is a Renault 5 GT turbo engine. It's got steel rods, forged pistons. It's got a cam in it, upright head gaskets, upright head bolt, head gaskets, upright head bolts. Um, it's ported and polished by Andrew ALD. I've got a GT28 turbo to go on it, so it should make decent power. I just need to get it in the hole. Um, obviously, as always, lacking free time. Um, I'm gonna have a bit of a sort out today, so I'm literally, I plan on moving all this and shunting everything down a bit more. It's my workbench. And my compressor down there. Here's the inlet ducts for the dyno to let fresh air in. They are absolutely massive, by the way. Um, I've got two of them, and then I've got a little fan at the bottom of this one that just pumps air through into like a floppy hose that I can pull behind here just to feed a bit more fresh air in. Dino cell is pretty much done um, to a degree. I don't know what I'm doing with the walls yet. I've just, the problem is I've spent so much money moving everything to this new dino cell and building this new dino cell that I now need to like earn money back and I'm literally booked up till like the first month, uh, first week of June at the moment. So I'm booked for like two, two, three months in advance most of the time now. Um, so I'm just trying to earn some money and get some money back in the bank before I do anything else because I feel like all I've done is spend money on this unit rather than it make money. But now I'm here, now I'm set up. We're back, we're back, we're going. Um, Ollie taped up all the joins in the wall to try and make it more airtight just because he found the tape here and he done it. Alex did a lovely job of um, putting some lights in. I've obviously got the ceiling lights and I've got these low down lights as well either side and I've got one at the back as well. Um, this is for, so when you're crawling around underneath cars, trying to strap them down, you can't see anything. You can uh, light up the underside of the car so you can see underneath of my rusty MX-5. <laughs> um, they are wired separately, although they're on one switch. Um, so this just turns all of them on and off. But he is gonna put another switch in there at some point so I can turn the low down ones off so they don't glare. But in all fairness, they haven't really been a problem at all. Since they've been fitted, they've always just worked great. Um, put my TVs up. This one does the security cameras. So I sort of just leave that one flapped up until I'm working. And uh, this one does obviously the dyno. Um, I went all Gucci because I was like, oh, I could bolt the screen to the wall again. But like last time in my old dyno cell, the screen used to fold off the wall and it was always, it's really hard to explain on camera. But if you can imagine you're sitting here, the screen was like here and it always had to, the pillar, no matter what car I done was in the way. And then I found on Amazon for like 130 pounds, you can buy flip down screens. So they are the slowest flip down motors ever. I don't know why I expected them to be quick, but I just expected them to be a bit quicker than this. Um, I do need to work out how to sync them to one remote because I've got two separate rem remotes for each screen at the moment. Obviously that one just does the security cameras, so I don't need to look at that at all. Um, and obviously this one's connected to the dyno, but it's all right, it's pretty cool. Um, still need to sort some ducting out because it's all a bit rough. Alex put a plug socket up there for me. So if I run it through some ducting and across, make it look a lot neater, but it works. Um, doors. Doors on the dyno cell are done. Ollie remade this wall out of ply because it was all um, out of plasterboard, but it was kind of falling apart, hence the plug sockets hanging off the wall at the moment. I've got a tube up there feeding cables through to the external screen outside the dyno so people when i'm here dynoing they can stand here and watch and they can look up at the screen and uh, see how much power their car doesn't make the heartbreaker always strikes again i had a guy come down 
um, in a Mark III Focus RS, and it made 384 horsepower on my dyno. It's like the first power run I've ever done in here, in the new place. And um, he, he was hoping it would make more than three, 400, because in all fairness, that's what he'd been promised. Um, he'd been told that with the map that had been put on his car and the mods that they'd done, his car would be about 420 horsepower. So put it on my dyno, it made 334 horsepower, something like that. Um, he wasn't overly happy about the power output, but I just said, look, you know, my dyno tells you the power you've got, not the power you want. I was like, I can't twist it to make you happy. This is an accurate reading dyno. So he left here and the very next day, he went to another dyno, albeit a four wheel drive dyno. Uh, they run the car in front wheel drive mode like I did as well, disconnected the Haldex. And on their dyno, it made 382. So my dyno actually overread by two horsepower. So I'm quite confident that my dyno is still very accurate. But yes, anyway, moving on. Doors are done. Uh, Ollie's put some nice locks on them. I've got a big lock up there, which I can actually reach now, because at the start I had a little one. So you used to have to get like a hop up to stand up, because obviously I'm uh, very vertically challenged myself. Um, so he's put these big bolts on for me now, so I can actually reach them. And then I've got that one down there. Slots in there. Nice beefy handle. We found this, which is great. Looks like a ham rail out of a toilet, I think. Again, big lock down there. That slots in there. Don't know why I'm trying to make locks exciting. Um, it's just kind of a two-handed job, but the door's slightly distorted. Obviously, you can imagine building a door this tall, it's, something's gonna happen. Um, but I can pull that forward and then like whack this. And then that slots over here and then it holds the door all tight shut. Um, I have got, which I haven't done yet, um, this rubber strip. So I need to buy a staple gun. So I bought this rubber strip off of eBay, probably too much, but you never know. Um, and I'm gonna put it all around here in the door jam. Is it there? Yeah. So I'm gonna put it here or here, just so when the doors are shut, they'll pull tight up against a rubber strip to make it, you know, more sound tight. But in all fairness, it's so quiet. Like, so I had a car on the dyno in here, a Focus ST with a, a straight for exhaust. And um, I shut all the doors and I shut the shutter down and I had all the fans running and I got Ollie to sit in the car and run the car from like 1200 RPM at idle up to like six and a half thousand RPM. And it was loud, like in here, it was really, really loud. Outside the dyno cell, it was really, really quiet. By the time I got outside my unit, you could like barely hear it. I, I literally, so I came out here and I walked just down there towards the entrance of where I come in. And um, when he was doing a power run, I literally couldn't hear it. I had like the, you know, one of them decibel meter apps that you can get on your iPhone. I had one of them open and, um, and it, it would give you descriptions of how loud the noise is, like foghorn and stuff like that. And when I was standing down there and he was doing a power run, um, it was describing the noise it could hear down there as a bumblebee. So I'm quite happy with that. So it was, it was me talking down there was louder than the power run. So that's what I wanted to hear. I've also gone over to the access road because there's a road over there as well. And by the time you get over there, you can't hear a thing. Um, I'd like to think I've got fairly matey with the guys around the back and they can tell I'm a little bit cautious and a bit nervous about noise so every time i'm like making a load of noise i keep running around the back um because obviously my extractors go outside the cell now if you remember the old place when i was building the dyno cell they would suck the air they were sort of up here and they sucked exhaust gases out and spat it into the dyno but when we moved in it out into the workshop um but when we moved into here there was a window there and it was smashed anyway so we took it out and my extractor sit there now and i've got ducting going out and then straight up like up the back of the building so all the um exhaust gases and noise sort of go out and up um, but obviously the guys behind in their workshop i'm like very cautious to keep everyone happy so i keep running around and said to them like you know it's not too noisy is it and they seem pretty happy with it which is good i uh, also offered them some free power runs so yeah um i don't really know what else to say got loads of storage up there it's all boarded put my crane up there so I don't know where you can see, but there's like an engine here, like a ZTEC engine out of my van. I need to do an update on my van as well. I've got to do so many updates. Um, I've just been in such a faff, like moving around and um, getting everything shipped over here and getting set up and like getting the work booked in. I just, I've ignored my own cars at all. Like all I've been doing is working in the other workshop, you know, five days a week down here on Saturdays, mapping and stuff and getting set up. So it's been like, total chaos recently but we're getting there we're getting there we're all up and running uh 
Don't know how if you really want to, but I suppose I'll show you. Toilet, this is turned into a bit of Alex's storage. It's fine, because obviously I share this unit with him. Put a new toilet seat on, it's pretty grim, but a toilet's a toilet. I didn't have a toilet in the last place, so I feel spoilt with that. Um, yeah, I suppose that's about it. My plan today is, I want to clear all this out, get my toolbox from down there, here, because I've got the ramp controls here. So I can work everything from here now, which is nice. So while I'm working, if I'm doing a timing belt or something, not that I really do timing belts here, and I can, uh, you know, operate the ramp from literally the side of the workbench. Got that all strung up nice and uh, professionally. Works anyway. Um, yeah, I just need to still tidy up. I feel like I tidy up, then I'm down here for an hour, and I feel like I have to tidy up again because I just make such a mess. But it is getting there. It's all right. Um, I want to shift everything down, get everything further down here that I'm going to need. Got my Mark II Fiesta down here as well, so I want to try and tuck that into the corner where the golf buggy is. Find somewhere else for the golf buggy. But yeah, it's getting there. Oh yeah, for noise as well, this whole tunnel is all spray insulated, so it actually holds the sound in really, really well, which I'm quite happy with. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's all right. It looks good. Just thought I'd uh, do you a quick little update video, although looking at this, I've waffled on for over 10 minutes now, but you know what I'm like, it's gonna be one straight cut. I've probably said something's wrong, but it doesn't matter, I'm not bothered. So yeah, here's my dyno cell. Here's my working ramp, I've got loads of room in front of it. What I should have done was put the ramp the other way around, because when I power on the Mark III Focus RS, we obviously reversed in onto the dyno, but I had to disconnect the Haldex first. So I had to drive in forward onto the ramp, disconnect the Haldex, let it down, turn around outside, reverse in onto the ramp, onto the dyno, do the power run. And then after I've done the power run, back outside, turn around, drive back in forward onto the ramp and then reconnect everything back up for him. So yeah, as you can imagine, it was very, very long winded. Um, I do want to change this ramp. I'm thinking about getting a bigger one. So look after a lot of vans and it'd be nice to have a, a dedicated area to work on these big vans that i've started doing a lot of like you know the wet belts and the eco blues you've probably seen it on my youtube channel um so if i do i'll mount that the other way so that i have to reverse the vans in i think but yeah there you go i've waffled on this is my unit i hope you like this little video any questions please feel free to ask i'll try and uh, keep an eye on the uh, comment section a bit more now now i've got a little bit more free time so yeah hope you like this video let me know what you want to see next. Let me know what you want an update on and I'll try and do it. Cheers guys. Like, share and subscribe. If you could, that'd be amazing because YouTube pays my bills a little bit and it would be a big help. Cheers.